What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to In Modern Nation. And I'm standing out here in the garage because I'm gonna show you how to construct your own clean room, or at least the way that I did it. Many of you have seen my LCD side panel mod videos and you are interested in buying one of the side panel kits that I'm gonna provide. So I'm gonna show you how I'm constructing them. But before I begin making those, I need to show you uh, the place where they're gonna be made. <clears throat> Excuse me, something caught in my throat. So anyway, I'm gonna start with a rack storage system. And um, you can see here, I've kinda got I've got some racks on the floor here that are gonna be constructed pretty soon. So I'm gonna put these racks together and um, that's gonna be the basis for the cabinet. And then I'm gonna to go to Home Depot, get some wood. That's gonna be for the walls. And as you'll see, as I go through it, um, I'm gonna show you the different design choices that I made. This is of course based off of a design pattern that I got online. There was another gentleman who was making his own clean room. Uh, I'll put the link in the video description below. So he also started with a rack system and then he added some wood to it and then he drilled it out to include an air vent. So the idea behind how this works is using positive pressure. So many of you that work with computers, you know how positive pressure works. When you have more air coming in that is going out, a buildup of air is gonna start pushing the dust out. The idea behind the LCD side panel mod construction is that we have no dirt, dust, hair, or anything between the layers of glass or plastic acrylic in this case. We don't want any dirt or dust to get in between because it's gonna be permanently sandwiched together and you're gonna have a bad time if your product comes with that. I'm gonna be putting this clean room together so that we have clean LCD side panels that are going out to customers. All right, uh, so I'm gonna get the racks together and I'll be back. Let's get started. All right, so now that the construction of the shelving is done, I'm gonna to head to Home Depot and we're gonna go get some wood to put inside. And when you purchase lumber from Home Depot, the first two cuts are free, which is great because who has the cash for a table saw? Nuts. I'll just start with a big piece of wood first and we'll pretend like that other part didn't happen. If I didn't mess up my measurements, it should fit together just perfectly. And nailed it. All right guys, so we got the wood in from Home Depot. Looks like everything fit just fine. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the wood out. We're gonna start sanding it down and prepping it for primer and paint. And I'm using particle board, which is full of glue and resin and all kinds of nasty shit you don't wanna breathe in. So make sure you're using a face mask. This stuff produces a lot of sawdust, but that's why it's so cheap. You wanna take your time when sanding the wood so that the paint adheres properly and you don't end up with splinters when you're handling the wood. All right, hey, so um, two things. Before I get to painting and priming, I need to cut some holes inside for two reasons. One is I need to provide access for 
any sort of electrical equipment that I'm using, anything from soldering irons, heat guns, um, hot air stations, whatever I need to use. So I'm gonna need to cut a hole here in the bottom and I've got a whole saw specific to that. The other thing is up top here, I'm gonna need some sort of ventilation to be able to install a 120 millimeter fan that's gonna provide the positive airflow that's gonna keep the air pushed out. Now remember down here, this doesn't have to be airtight. It only needs to be uh, as closed as much as possible. The positive pressure inside of the cabinet is gonna force air out this way. That's gonna prevent any dust or hair or dirt from getting inside. And here come the power tools. First, I'm gonna drill a hole with the pilot bit and follow it up with the hole saw. By the way, this is a three inch bimetal hole saw, which can be purchased on Amazon using the affiliate link in the video description below. By the way, this hole saw sounds terrible. You should be thanking me for muting the audio on this one. Do you really wanna hear it? See, not so pleasant, is it? You're welcome. By a show of hands, how many of you just threw down your headphones in anger? Well, too bad, because this is YouTube and I can't see anything. I also managed to get the whole saw stuck in the hole. It's a fiberboard cupcake with sawdust frosting. And this is just an illustration, because we're not done yet. Nope, we got hole number two to drill. And this is going to be for the 120 millimeter fan intake. And anybody with a ruler can tell you that 120 millimeters is not equal to three inches. In fact, if you said three inches is equal to 75 millimeters, you might be correct. And I just said that, so I'm correct. In order to compensate for the difference in size, I am tracing a hole the size of the inner diameter of the fan, and I'll be cutting it out with an electric coping saw, because jigsaws are for people with money, and I didn't buy one when I was at Home Depot. So now you get to watch me struggle with my Dremel Moto saw. It worked, but I'm fast forwarding this clip at 2000 times normal speed, so you don't have to sit through it like I did. After a quick sand job, I marked the holes for drilling. I put these screws in just to hold the fan down, kind of as a placekeeper until the final assembly. All right, it's paint time. This disgusting white mess is Dunn Edwards DEW 380 white. And it comes in eggshell, if you care at all. And the thing I hate about paint stores is that they have like 50 million swatches and they either look all identical or you end up telling yourself, I would not call that white at all. I didn't really pick out this paint. It was some leftover paint from my parents' house uh, that just seemed like it would do the trick. You could spray paint the walls if you wanted to, but I felt like for the surface area that I need to cover that a roll-on application would be a better choice. <clears throat> oh no, my video continuity is ruined. Hey, what's going on guys? It's a few weeks later and uh, the cabinet's coming along fine. Now, I wanted to light up the inside of the cabinet and so I had the choice. I could either use the um, LED lighting that I use inside the LCD side panel mod, or I could buy my own dedicated light. So I decided to go with this. It's an LED strip light. It's made by Lithonia Lighting. It's 1150 lumens. It's only a 4000K type light. It's not the 5500K that I hope for, the natural daylight. Um, so it's gonna have a little bit of a yellowish tint to it. The problem is that it was made for home or garage installation to mount directly into the wall. Basically, it's hardwired. It doesn't come with a three prong 120 volt connector. So I had to uh, get my own. So this is a, a three prong and it's got the three wires. Uh, it looks pretty old, actually. Um, I, I took this from my dad. Uh, he had some extras laying around. So uh, we're gonna try hooking this up, uh, plug the light in, see if we can get the light working. Here's an example of what not to do. Now, normally I wouldn't be showing this part for a guide, but I wanted to give you all an illustration. Now, pay attention to the colors. Of course, green goes to green, that's your ground. Red goes to red, and black goes to black. Having wired together an AC outlet in the past, I'm a little bit ashamed of this. Pay attention to the orientation on the power inverter. Shit. I think something just popped or else you might end up sending live AC into the output. Well, a quick trip back to Lowe's and I picked up another work light. This time I wired black to black and red to white. Turns out white is power in this case. You could definitely see in the video that this light has got some yellow to it, but it's gonna be perfect for my needs. I'm gonna be affixing this light to the top with some double-sided tape. This is made from scotch and this stuff is incredibly strong. I used it in the LCD side panel mod and that is what's holding the window to the case. So trust me when I say this stuff is the real deal. 
And once I place the light, I can't really remove it. So wherever it sticks, that's where it lives. I'm going to press it firmly to make sure that it's really on there. We don't want this falling off in the middle of construction. So I'm going to route the cable through the hole that we cut earlier in the video and plug it into the power strip already mounted to the side of the cabinet. To help protect the inside of the cabinet from dust, we have this window kit. This was actually the recommendation of the original creator. He initially used a shower curtain, but wanted something with a little bit more clarity so that he could see what he was working on. It doesn't matter which window kit you get, as long as it's clear. The kit includes an instruction manual, which we won't be using, so trash, and also this adhesive tape, which is useful, so hang on to that. Pretty sure you could figure out what to do with the tape. You want to lay it around the edges of the cabinet and then peel off the adhesive backing. Peel porn in three, two, one. Now I've got to unravel the window shrink film and attach it to the adhesive. Hey, don't look at me. I'm just the narrator. And now it's time to see what it looks like. So minor issue with the plastic getting sucked into the cabinet, but I think once we add the filter, we'll be able to fix that. Speaking of filters, let's work on the filter. So I got this pure HEPA-like filter. It's not a HEPA, but it's like HEPA. And this clear silicone for JD Well that we're gonna use to seal the holes. Did I mention affiliate links are in the video description below? So this filter filters out like 99.7% of all particulate matter in the air and smoke and allergens. Basically does everything I needed to do and more. And it should be a great filter. It's very thin, so it should be high airflow. Uh, so loss of pressure shouldn't be an issue. And that's all fine and dandy, you might say. But Chris, what are you doing with the cardboard? Well, I'm creating a gasket that I'm going to seal with the silicone and it's going to seal up the vacuum so that no other dust can get in. See, it's like a cheap picture frame that happens to hate dust. So now I'm using the silicone to seal the fan to the gasket. Now remember, it doesn't have to be airtight. We just wanna make sure that dirt and dust are not getting in. See, it was so fun, I did it twice. And now I'm going to attach it to the filter. I'm attaching the fan to the filter using screws that are penetrating the silicone into the filter itself. And if you're concerned that dust and dirt are gonna get in through the holes of the fans, you're probably not wrong. But at some point in this project, I have to say when enough is enough. You need to decide for yourself whether certain steps are necessary or if it's just being anally retentive. This is especially true considering I buy power advises if you're gonna open up the Snowblind LCD to do so in a kitchen or bathroom with low humidity. No, I am not even kidding. This is straight out of the Snowblind blind LCD teardown instructions. So yeah, maybe I'm a little bit crazy coming up with this cabinet, but these are the links that I will go to to ensure a great product for my customers. Okay, so the water heater just turned on. Um, this audio recording is going to suck. Perks of recording in the garage. Also, I tried shaving this morning. You kind of see... I missed a section over here. It turns out my shaver died and I can't find where the charger is. <sighs> well, I'll figure it out. Anyway, the cabinet is fully completed and assembled and I just received the side panel from the NZXT S340. Special thanks to NZXT for sending that out so I can begin prototyping for the LCD side panel mod version 3.0. Now, keep in mind, if you guys are going to be working on things like hard drives and you want to replicate something like this, I would recommend something a little bit smaller. Now, DIY Perks has a video out where he makes a glove box, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an airtight box with gloves that go in, and it's connected to a vacuum system. I think this would be more beneficial for working on smaller items. 
I needed a clean air cabinet for much bigger items that didn't require the same level of stringency. Obviously, you don't want any hair or dust getting in between you know, the motor and all of the platters inside of a hard drive, but it's not necessarily that crucial for something like say the LCD side panel mod. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Until the next video when I begin construction on the LCD side panel version three. Um, yeah, that that's dumb. That's a dumb outro. How can I make this outro better? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the construction process of this video. And if you decide to replicate something like this yourself, please send me a link or let me know in the comment section or on social media. I'd love to see what you guys make. Shut up. Thank you so much for checking out this video. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the modern nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below, or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching and I will see ya.